Greetings, people of Middle-earth. Kamal here with a very interesting integral. We have the integral from 0 to infinity of dx divided by 1 plus x times alpha plus log to the 2n of x, where n is, of course, a positive integer. Okay, so how exactly do we plan on getting started? Well, judging by the symmetries involved here, a transformation from the x realm to the 1 by x realm should you know, reveal something onto us. This is quite a useful substitution or transformation, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, taking x to the 1 by x realm takes dx to the negative 1 by x squared dx realm. And by that token, we have i being the integral now from infinity to 0 of negative 1 by x squared dx divided by 1 plus x is now 1 plus 1 by x and we have alpha plus log 1 by x all to the 2n. Okay, cool. So we can get rid of the negative sign if we switch up the limits of integration. So we have, again, an integral from 0 to infinity of 1 by x squared dx divided by 1 plus x divided by x times alpha plus Log 1 by x is negative log x, but it's being raised to 2n, so we're going to get log to the 2n of x again. And we see some nice cancellation taking place, and this implies that i equals the integral from 0 to infinity of dx divided by x times 1 plus x times alpha plus log to the 2n of x. But we know that the target integral i also has this form, so we might as well add up these two forms of the integral and get 2 times i equal to the integral from 0 to infinity. And let's see, we can factor out, we can factor out 1 by 1 plus x times alpha plus log to the 2n of x. And we're left with 1 plus 1 by x dx. Now some simplification is in order. We have i equal to 1 half the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 by 1 plus x times alpha plus log to the 2n of x times 1 plus x divided by x dx. And again, we see some very nice cancellation. And the structure we have now is considerably more simple or hospitable in comparison to the structure we started out with. We have integral 0 to infinity dx divided by x times alpha plus log to the 2n of x. And now a substitution seems quite obvious. So let me just pick a different color now. And we're going to let log x here equal to u, which implies that 1 by x dx equals du. Now, what about the limits of integration? As x approaches 0, we have u approaching negative infinity. And as x approaches infinity, we have u approaching infinity as well. So all that means, i is now the e integral, 1 half times the integral, that is, from negative to positive infinity, of dx divided by alpha plus u to the 2n. And this is pretty cool because notice that the integrand is an even function of u. So if we replace the limits by 0 and infinity, we just need to double the result. So we have 2 divided by 2 canceling out the integral from 0 to infinity of dx divided by alpha plus u to the 2n. And now, for a nice substitution, we're going to let... Hmm, let's see. We're going to let u here equal to alpha times tangent theta. Or rather, we just let u to the 2n over here equal alpha times tangent square theta. That should be much more useful. So this implies on differentiation that we have 2n times u to the 2n minus 1 du equal to alpha times tangent theta times secant square theta times 2 d theta. The 2s cancel out quite nicely. 
And now we have du equal to 1 by n times u to the 1 minus 2n tangent theta secant square theta d theta. But we also need something else. Oh, I forgot the alpha parameter. We need u to the 1 minus 2n. Well, this equation here implies that u equals alpha to the 1 by 2n. Terribly sorry about that. Alpha to the 1 by 2n times tangent to the 1 by n of theta. Correct? So we have u to the 1 minus 2n sorting out quite nicely to alpha to the 1 minus 2n divided by 2n times tangent to the 1 minus 2n divided by n theta times tangent theta secant square theta d theta. I'm not exactly performing any of the multiplications right now because I, I'm hopeful for some cancellations later. So we have tangent theta here, secant square theta here, d theta. So that's our differential element. And now what about our target integral? How exactly did that transform? I'm going to zoom out a bit just to give myself some writing space. This implies that the target integral i is now what exactly? So as u approaches 0, we need the tangent of theta to approach 0 as well. So theta is going to approach 0. And for u tending to infinity, we'll need theta approaching pi by 2. Okay, cool. So we have the integral now from 0 to pi by 2 of I have mistakenly been carrying forward the wrong differential element. Terribly sorry about that. Anyway, so what exactly do we have? Uh, we have alpha by n. That's one thing. And we have another alpha term as well. More writing space. So we have alpha by n times alpha to the 1 minus 2n by 2n. And the rest of the differential element is tangent to the 1 minus 2n by n theta. We also have a tangent theta and a secant square theta, d theta. Thankfully, I did not write dx again. And we have alpha plus alpha times tangent square theta. Yeah, that's our denominator. We factor out alpha, which would mean that we have some cancellation happening outside. Wait a minute. And... Yeah, much better. We have some cancellation happening outside. And 1 plus tangent squared theta is the squared secant function. So again, we have some cancellation. That is obviously quite welcome. So we have alpha to the 1 minus 2n divided by 2n divided by n times integral 0 to pi by 2 tangent theta to the what exactly? We have 1 minus 2n by n plus 1. So that sorts out to 1 minus n by n d theta. Okay, cool. Next up, we should expand the tangent function here. So we have alpha to the 1 by 2 n minus 1 divided by n times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sine to the 1 by n minus 1 of theta times cosine to the 1 by n, wait, negative 1 by n plus 1 of theta d theta. And this here is pretty much an integral form of the beta function. It's the trigonometric form of the beta function, that is. So I'll expand by a factor of 2. And we know that the beta function with complex arguments u and v is defined as twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sine to the 2u minus 1 of theta times cosine to the 2v minus 1 terribly sorry about that, 2v minus 1 of theta d theta. Okay, cool. So all we have to do now is draw parallels to decipher what exactly is the value of u and the value of v. Well, u here is obviously equal to 1 by 2n, and we have negative 1 by n plus 1 equal to 2v minus 1, which implies that v should be equal to 1 minus 1 by 2n. So that means our target integral i 
is in fact alpha to the 1 by 2 n minus 1 divided by, oh, terribly sorry about that, divided by 2 n, correct, times the beta function evaluated at 1 by 2 n and 1 minus 1 by 2 n. And now to use the relationship between the beta function and its more famous cousin, the gamma function, we have alpha to the 1 by 2 n minus 1 divided by 2 n times gamma of the first argument times gamma of the second argument divided by gamma of the sum of those two arguments. So we have 1 by 2 n plus 1 minus 1 by 2 n. These two cancel out. And we have gamma 1, of course, being equal to 1. And now we can invoke another one of my favorite tools, Euler's beautiful reflection formula. We know that gamma z times gamma 1 minus z equals pi times the cosecant of pi times z. So in this case, we just have z equal to 1 by 2n. So this implies that the target integral i equals pi times alpha divided alpha to the 1 by 2n minus 1 divided by 2n times 1 by sine of pi by 2n. And like I said, n here is a positive integer. And yeah, there are no problems with the n variable and the alpha parameter here was assumed to be not zero. And this is a pretty nice looking result in terms of both our parameters. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. More importantly, I hope you learned something from the video. Do drop me follow on Instagram as well. And in case you like the effort I'm putting out, you can support me on Patreon using the link below. Thank you. See you next time.